Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice coming good and clear. Please let me know if you have any problem. Uh, today our topic, as uh, you see in from the title, uh, the Muhammadan they claim, you know, the, I mean, as usual, Islam without lies dies. And the Muhammadan they have always to duct tape the Quran to make it look something different from what it is. Nothing new here, but, uh, you know, this is what we do, as you remember. Uh, we always like to show the truth, and the truth will set you free. Uh, according to the Sheikh uh, Mufti, Mufti Mink, uh, you know, he is saying that, look what the Quran is saying, and look what uh, James Webb uh, discovered. And uh, obviously, James Webb is doing a great job and uh, uh, discovering things the Quran mentioned already, you know. Uh, let us see what's happening here. It looks like I'm going in different channel. Uh, is the, is guys, the... Do we have more one broadcast going on in Arabian Prophet by mistake? All right, I see here it says 90, but the other one says 91 watching scheduled. I don't know what is that. Very weird. And I see people waiting for me there. I don't know what is that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I hope that it's not doubling the the, the life. Uh, we are using software, as you see, and I don't know if they are, it's doing a good job. Uh, so let us see what uh, what Mufti Mink he said about the amazing discovery in James Webb, uh, which is obviously in total match with the Quran, because the Quran is a book of truth, you know, as you know, and uh, Muslims don't lie when they speak, as you. Continues to say, which is it of the favors of your Lord do you, man and jinn, deny? Allah says, O oh man and jinn, go. Is the sound coming clear, guys? Is his voice coming through? Do you hear him? Did you hear the video? Uh, I'm speaking for Holloway, or well, maybe, I don't know. I'm using a uh, smartphone. Yesterday it was good, why today is not? Did you hear the Mufti Mink? Okay, let's continue. So Allah, he said to the human and the genie, do what? The skies and the earth, and continue therein. You won't be able to go beyond the point of the authority of Allah. When Allah authorizes or permits or allows you, you will go because he wants you to discover something. He wants Do you see how they lie? When the Quran is saying the opposite, that you cannot go. And I mean, can you believe how they lie? He is saying, go, go, Allah, he wants, he authorizes you. What if we go in the Quran, we will find that it's the, it says the opposite. You are not authorized to go. This is the verse he is saying, and this verse was a challenge for a human being and for mankind. It's not a challenge for uh, just a, a human. Uh, it's for a human being. It can be louder. Okay, let me see if I can uh, fix the audio. Give me a second, guys. Let us see. Maybe we can make it louder from here. I don't know. We will see. Uh, the default is okay I think uh, now I find why the reason all right I think now you should have me better right the uh, computer was choosing uh, wrong microphone are we better now it should be better isn't it let me know so you see here how he lie he says the Quran says go and discover yeah and Allah will not allow you beyond the point of authorization. But the fact, <laughs> this is not what the Quran is saying. The Quran is saying is the opposite. And this is the verse he was quoting, chapter 55, verse number 33. 
does it really say go and explore but you cannot go farther than what Allah allow you the verse says totally the opposite you cannot actually it's a challenge this verse here it says O ye assembly of jinns and man if it be ye can pass beyond the zone of the heaven and the earth pass ye not without the authority shall you be able to pass now and then how and now okay well you cannot pass without authority correct that's what it says but if you go down a little bit here just one verse more verse number 35 because this one doesn't count this one is just repeating the same thing just chip it uh, Muhammad he keep repeating the same sentence like me you know when you rub make rub music you know take your shoes and then you choose and you repeat that 20 50 times the song and the, the whole song is too many. Uh, so here it says on you will be sent oh you evil twenty twine like you know here uh, both of you genie and the human you might see they are talking about two creatures will be burned if they try to do so who the genie and the men because the only one who will try to go behind the, the zone of the earth and the heaven is the genie and the man so what the Quran is saying if you try to do that Allah will send on you not you know a, a fire and this fire is made from uh, uh, like uh, a Milton uh, uh, Cooper you see here the translation is not saying that but if you change the translation translator as usual Muslims you know you cannot find one decent translation in this religion Here we go we just change the translator see Milton press and you will not be able to defend yourself so look how Mufti Mink the false Mufti he claimed that the Quran saying go and explore when the Quran in fact saying you cannot go and explore and then if you look at the comment underneath the video you will see the Muslims are amazed about the speech and the guy making a speech Allah he said to us go explore discover then you know Allah he made everything amazing beautiful but the Quran saying fiction story that the one who tried to go out of the earth Allah will burn his ass will burn him alive so instead of saying the truth that the Quran is a book of lies and stupidity and science proven already that what Allah made as a challenge is absolutely false challenge the Muslim they come with different solution they try to make it a discovery or and then he speak about uh, James Webb uh, you know and it says the star you see there he is not there no more but this is against what Islam teach you know I decide to go and explain the verses uh, according to the Muslims I mean why Muslims don't read their books this is a moderate uh, shake comparing to the rest <clears throat> the interpretation of uh, of uh, Suyuti, I will put it in the screen is uh, considered moderate you know Suyuti is not like an ancient scholar uh, let me put it for you in the screen and I will use Google translation in order to translate this page click here translate to English uh, for some reason is not translating let us see let me take it off for a second to see what is the issue it translated only the top of the page for some reason which is weird okay let us see hmm. maybe I need to open it in different uh, maybe maybe this is like kind of a PDF file let us see I will try to find different web page <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, let's try this one. Maybe this one will do better. This is more of a normal web page. Okay, here we go. Now we go back and we put it for you on the screen. Give me a second. See, this is why I like uh, my other software, but people like those uh, new ones, I don't know. The other one is easier to show things and switch between windows. This one is very complicated and slow. All right. So this is a Tafsir al-Dur al uh, by Imam al suyuti explaining what the Quran is saying. And now the Muslim, they will say you are lying. It doesn't say that, CP, as usual. And the Muslim, they say, will say, we don't agree. We Muslims agree not to disagree. And then the Muslim, they will say, oh, the scholar says that. But in fact, you will see that the ones we are talking about is either Muhammad or a high quality supposed to you when we say high quality it doesn't mean really are quality they are the trash of the trash but those are the high quality between the scholars or called scholars in Islam so I will use Google translation in front of you translate to English I hope this one will work here we go here you see from the authority of etc authority you see it's not it's not just people you know authority when you see authority it's mean the Muslims accept the person to be authority, isn't it? Otherwise, we will not say authority. You will give authority to who? And then you will see here, they are explaining what the Quran is saying. So if you go down here, the Quran explains how uh, Allah, he created everything. He who created all that in he said he made that an earth, an earth is uh, uh, marked for you when he created the earth, smoke erupt from it. And that is he saying, he turned to the heaven and he made them seven heaven. He created seven heaven, some of them in the top of others, which means the heavens are like in levels. They are seven and there is, maybe Mr. Mink can tell us the seven earth is story which is coming from the greek mythology who they saw seven planets in the sky and muhammad he claimed that those are the seven earths and here you will see the the you know the story uh, like uh, kept in better and better let us go here and see how um, how the story work how does the story work uh, let us see uh, okay here we go uh, you see the translation is not really coming good uh, it says here he created the earth on a whale which he mentioned in his saying in the chapter of noon if you go to noon you will see it says that Allah created the earth in the top of a whale and the whale is in the water and he put the earth in the top of the back of the whale uh, and you can read that, you know, in As-Safat, they are saying here, which is the name of a verse. And then, you know, uh, let me be sure that this is uh, As-Safat, sorry, Sifat. The translation here is not accurate. Sifat means, the, like, uh, description, you know, uh, in the, the name of the book or the name of the uh, chapter. So, and then, uh, when Allah, he created the, the earth, he put it in the top of the wheel, and the wheel was in the water, and uh, uh, and then Allah, you know, uh, he uh, he he made the earth in the top of uh, of the wheel, and then after he made the smoke coming from it, uh, the wheel he moved. The wheel he moved. Uh, there is an angel who appeared, and the angel he stood in a rock, and the rock was facing the wind. And this rock was not in the earth, neither in heaven, between them. And then the wheel moved, and the earth was shaking. Uh, for you, translation is not too much accurate, but what we can do, I mean, this is, this is what uh, we have. 
uh, Google translation. If somebody have the book uh, in English, that will be perfect. However, if we go in the same in the same website, uh, we will find the chapter known. Let us go. That one is translated by Muslim, so that will help us better. Um, let me go there. A chapter noon, which is speaking about the creation of the earth and the heaven. Um, where is noon? And then you will see how the how Islam really function. Actually, let me go first to chapter uh, Qaf and show you how even Muslims understand the sky and the heaven and how their science work. And how Muslims, they change their science, the bent in the season and what fit into Islam, which means to make Islam look better. Uh, okay. All right, let's show this one here now, for now. Don't worry, we will make it bigger. As you see, this is a Muslim translation from his narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is the toppest, toppest ever, ever Islamic cleric ever, supposedly. And this is the one chosen by Muhammad to explain everything in the Quran. Ibn Abbas, he said, in the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf, he said, Qaf is an azure mountain overlooking the world and the color of the sky takes from it. Allah swear by it, by the glorious Quran. So according to the Muslims, there is a mountain, azure mountain, overlooking this world, which means the earth. And why the earth, uh, why we cannot see those mountains? Because simply they have the same color of the sky. And actually the sky itself is taking its color uh, from the, that mountain. Now if we go here, let us see, we go, I mean the Quran is, there is tons of stories which is very funny and very unique. And uh, uh, every every story in the Quran is is a. Uh, I can go to the, the chapter of the genie, but I will uh, skip that and go. Let us we'll see which one we will choose. Hmm. Because you know, remember the Quran is full of stories, and all of them they are funny and stupid, like the one who made them. Um, we can go to As-Safat, but let us go first. Um, uh, give me a second. Which is a verse is better to choose to prove the point we are trying to say. Um, let's see. All right, let us see here. All right. This is... You see, the more you read the, the Islamic interpretation, the more you see how the Muslims, they are trying to duct tape their stupid religion and how much they are in chaos you know, regarding their, their own uh, book. Uh, okay, let us see this one here.
we will put it for you in the screen. And I changed the Muslim to say that we are lying. But, you know, as usual, doesn't matter what you show them, you are lying. Aren't you? You are lying. Even if it's a, even if it is a fly, it's a goat. Doesn't matter what you show them. If we go here, um, all right. Let us go to the chapter of Al Qalam. That can help. The chapter of the pen. And then we will see something very hilarious. And then the Muslim, they will say, we don't agree. The one who wrote those things is a liar and it is not really what Allah, he said. So let us go back here. Uh, I hope that uh, James Webb telescope is going to discover those things soon because uh, that will be amazing and I believe many they will convert to Islam immediately so if we read together let us zoom in it says here and from the, his narration in the authority of Ibn Abbas he said regarding interpretation of Allah saying noon Allah swear by noon which is a whale that carry the earth in its back while the water is beneath which is the bowl, a bowl, and under the bowl there is a rock, and under the rock is the dust, and none knows what under the dust save Allah. Now, you might say, well, this has nothing to do with the heaven now. No, it have to do with the heaven and the earth, because the Quran is supposedly speaking about both. You cannot go beyond the zone and the earth and the heaven. So now we understood how the Muslims, they see the earth. The earth is a land in the top of a whale and the whale is carrying it in his its back and beneath the whale there is a bowl and the bowl he stand on a rock and under the rock there is a dust and no one knows what is under the dust save Allah here the Muslims the James Webb of Allah I mean the Muslims is stopped that's it none knows look the honesty I mean all of this is a true story now from here to here all of this in blue is what they know Brother, after that point, nobody knows what is under the dust, save Allah. So now this is the earth. Let us go and see the heaven. If we go and search the hadith, we will find tons of hadith. But let us go first to the, 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 the Quran. I just see the Quran claiming that nobody can go out of the zone of the earth and the heaven. And if you try to do so, Allah will shoot you. But all of us, we knew right now, as we speak, there is a station, space station, where people are living in all year around. And even, you know, like uh, they go, they change uh, team, they bring another team, etc. So the station is staying. That's why it's called station. It stay in the place and there's a spaceship go between them. And, you know, you can go watch tons of videos on YouTube about those people who they are in the space. And here you ask yourself, as long as the Quran is threat, that anyone who tried to go out of the zone of the earth and the heaven, Allah is going to shoot him. Why Mufti Mink did not read this verse? Why he did read only this verse? Any Muslim can tell us? Why he tried to deceive people saying, well, you know, Allah, he challenged and he gave authority to discover certain points, certain things. He said, go and discover. Is that really what the verse is saying? Do you think that Mufti Mink do not know what this verse is saying? Do you think he did not see it? Do you think really he have no idea? Do you think he did that by mistake? Or he was really just doing that in purpose? So he can deceive. Deception is, a, is Islam. If we go to a different verse in the Quran, we will find, as an example, let us go to Ibn Kathir. 
What Ibn Kathir say about this verse, which is uh, Mufti Ming saying that this is about go and explore. It says here, uh, if you go here, it says, O assembly of men, if you are able to pass beyond the zone of the heaven and the earth, let me zoom in so you can see it better. That's better. Uh, then pass here is repeating the same verse, and then he says, meaning, you will never be able to escape Allah order and decrees. You will never avoid able to avoid his rules. And then he go down. What does that mean exactly? What is that? It's mean you have he gave you your rules. You cannot escape it. You cannot that's it. He created it in the earth. And here he says, there will be sent against you both. Uh, he uses the Arabic words, which is very funny, and will not be able to defend yourself. Here it says, Allah will send on you a flame from above, the fire from below, and the smoke. So if you try to escape, if you try to go out, Allah will burn you. Uh, and if you try to escape, this is a real thing. It's a melt brace will pour it over your heads, as you see. So, and you will never be victorious. You will never be able to do so. Let us go to the different verse in the Quran. In chapter 15, verse number 16, it says, Allah, he made the zodiacal uh, uh, signs uh, in the heaven, which is very funny. What zodiacal signs? Okay. And then we uh, we protected, we guarded the heaven from every shaitan or regime, the, the evil shaitan, except the one who tried to gain hearing to steal information from Allah. The one who tried to do that, which means he go up to heaven, trying to go up, Allah right away will shoot him with a flaming fire. In fact, in Arabic it says shihab. Shihab is a meteor. Uh, flaming fire is going to come to you. So what the verse here is saying, that the earth have a limit and uh, the sky is protected. Not the earth is protected, the sky. So this is sky which is guarded from every evil person who tried to go out, including the shaitan. If you remember the verse we mentioned before, the verse was challenging both the shaitan, shaitan is a genie, in case you do not know, the shaitan, the genies, and the men, both. Now, the Muslim believe that shaitan, he have ability we don't have. Shaitan can fly. Shaitan, he can go up. He can go through walls. He can go through doors. So the other verse is speaking about shaitan ability because a human cannot go that anywhere. I cannot, cannot fly, I cannot go up. So who is the one who's going to be able to go up? It is the shaitan. But look what will happen. The shaitan, who, if he try to go up, the sky is guarded. Guarded by whom? By Allah, who is going to shoot the shaitan who try to steal information from Allah. And here it is clearly... But any that gains a hearing by his teeth is pursued by flaming fire. So shaitan, he go, and this is the Muslim, they speak about James Webb now. Look at the fiction, look at this superstition. Shaitan, he will steal information by going to listen to Allah. Who in the world want to believe such a garbage? What is that? I mean, can you believe this? Shaitan, he will go to the sky in purpose to do what? to steal information. What will happen to him? Allah immediately will shoot him with fire. And if you don't like this translation, we can change it for you, whatever translation you wish. All is stupid, and all is proving the stupidity of the author of the Quran. Save him who steal the hearing, and then and then both, both a clear flame pursue. What the heck is that? This guy is using Google translation maybe. Uh, let us see a different idiot, Hilali and Khan. Uh, this is a better idiot. 
is except him, the devil. This devil who he try to get to to pass through the guarded uh, heaven, and here by the way he says near heaven, yeah, because the you know remember, uh, the, according to Islam, the stars is located in the lowest heaven, and the lowest heaven is what we see by our eyes, and this is stupid because there's billions of his stars we do not see by eyes. And we will not be able to be able to see them by eyes, even by telescope. Uh, but according to Muhammad, Allah He created the stars as decoration, as you see. You see it? 15, verse number 16. Why Allah created the stars? To beautify the sky. But what we see in the sky are really nothing compared to what is in the sky. So what you beautification for whom? What is that? You know, this is a Christmas light. So when shaitan he tried to go in, Allah will shoot him. And here, by the way, it says here the earth he made it flat, and then Allah he threw mountains in the top of it. According to the Quran, Allah he made the earth flat, chapter 15, verse number 19, and then Allah he placed mountains in the top of the earth, which is very stupid because mountains are actually coming from inside the earth, not in the, somebody put them in the top of the earth. Mountains either happen by a volcano. Or the tectonic plates pressure between two tectonic plates like the himalaya and etc or mountains as the one you see hawaii etc you see volcano or in italy so it's not a rock somebody put it at the top of the earth actually in different verse allah he said we put the mountain in the top of the earth so it's going to stop shaking and the muslim they, they say that yes mountains they stop shaking the fact is not true Mountains happen in area where it is shaking, not the opposite, like Japan. Uh, they have earthquake every second almost. If we go to different verse here, you will see uh, Allah saying, "We have indeed uh, decorated the heaven, you know, with the stars." Okay, and then we protected the heaven from every uh, evil uh, shaitan or Married, you know, married is, uh, you know, this is telling you again what Muhammad, he is a superstition person. Married is not really from the Arabic culture or from the Arabic language. Uh, married is a, is, a, is a person who looks like an Asian, but he is so big and uh, he is bold. You know, I don't know if you saw a movie about genie in the ball, like you see a guy, he is big, wearing what looked like a diaper, you know, and he is kind of choppy, you know. So uh, the married is, you remember we mentioned in the hadith that Allah will make the Muslims murdun. Murdun is somebody like a married, which he have no hair in his body. Totally no hair. Let me see if I can find you a picture of a married. So you can understand what the Muslims are speaking about or what the Quran is coming with. Let's see. Well, Google is not helping me really to find who are married, but I think you get the image. Uh, you know, like you can watch any movie, like about genie or Arabic movie. Uh, you will see what I'm talking about. Actually, I found one, but I don't want to be in trouble with a copyright. It's a video, not uh, not an audio, not a picture. But I think you get the image. Uh, so. So shaitan will try to go up to heaven again and then Allah is going to do the same as we explained in the previous verses and this is chapter 37 verse number 7 and then when they try to hear they try to steal information they will be thrown from every side which means they will shoot them and then except such as someone who snatch away something so like some shaitan they will be able to snatch information you see the defense of allah is not perfect some of the shaitan they will be able to snatch some information they will be pursued pursued by a flaming fire 
or piercing brightness. But they will not die. Still, they will still have formation. So like he will come back with some injury. But he cannot go still. He cannot go through. But he will be able to steal some information. Now, the most I'm talking about James Webb and talking about science and discovery. Well, why they don't talk about the discovery? That shaitan will go up to steal information. And then the reason we have the meteor we see in the sky because Allah is shooting shaitan. This is exactly what it says here. You know, you see when they say the word shihab, uh, if we go, actually, we can go right now and see the uh, the interpretation for the verse, and you will die laughing. We can open Ibn Kathir, and then what the Muslim will say? Uh, we don't accept Ibn Kathir. Shall we go to Ibn Kathir? <laughs> Chapter 37, and we can go for the verse number uh, uh, 7, 8, uh, 9, 10, etc., you know? Uh, let us go there, actually. Let me open it first, so we don't blind you with the screen here, moving up and down. Okay, chapter 37. And we go from verse... Uh, 6 to 10. All right. Here we go. Read with me now. And you will see the science. And as you see, the Muslim, they change the meaning of the Quran depending on the season and depending on the month and the century. So when they want the Quran means something, when they want the Quran means something totally different. So here, this is the, the page, as you see. We adorn the heaven with the stars. And it's to to and to guard against shaitan. So the purpose of the stars is beautification and to shoot shaitan. So according to Muhammad, Allah when he shoot, he shoot a star really. Uh, actually, the verse in front of us says that in chapter 67, verse number five. It says, And we adorn the nearest heaven with lambs. And we have made such a lamps as missiles to drive away the shaitan. So of, of uh, the uh, James Webb discovery. Why Mufti Meng don't tell the Muslim that this is the reason the stars are exist? Hmm? And actually, if you look at the uh, look, if you look at the comment, you will see the Muslim making comment trying to change, uh, I mean, the topic. They don't want to talk about what we are saying, showing to them because it's really embarrassment. So you talk about what the Quran is saying, the Muslim, they say to you, speak about Trinity. Or look at this guy. Yes, who said Jesus is God, Paul, what? I mean, after all what we are showing you in the screen about the stupidity in your Quran, and you are worried now about who said that Jesus is God, Paul? Shouldn't you give us a response for what we are reading here? So what the Muslim they do, you know, they try to cover their trace. They try to change the topic in the speed of light. It's, suddenly the topic is about Jesus is being God or not. <laughs> and notice we we debate with Muslims about if Jesus is God or not and if Muhammad is a scam or not this is how good Jesus is to the point is he God he's so good Muhammad is he child molester he is so bad <laughs> and this is the book which bring into brought to us by Muhammad Indeed, we have put the biggest stars in the heaven, we beautified in the for the beholder, and we have guarded it from every outcast shaitan. So when we see stars come in from the sky or falling star, which is not really a star, according to the, 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 the smart, intelligent prophet Muhammad, those are stars Allah, he shoot with them, the shaitan, 
because Allah is protecting the heaven from the shaitan. And what the Muslims respond? Read with me. This is a Muslim He's making a response. Uh, the prophet, the cases still stand. God cannot be your father. He made mother and father because what is it? <laughs> look what we are showing in the screen, and look what the Muslim comment speaking to me about. We are asking them how Allah protect the, sh the sky from shaitan by shooting them by a star. What is the response to Abdul? Read carefully. Arabian prophet. The case still stand. God cannot be your father. He made mother and father because only that is right. Stupid. First of all, who said that a God is our father for real? As like he married from my mom, you idiot. When we say God is the father, we mean that he is the one who gives us everything. Who, who, who provide you food? Who provide you this heaven, this earth, this sky? God. Who is the father then? He is the father. So... They change the topic in the speed of light because the, what, what we're showing in the screen is, you know, make them look stupid, look like a fool. Mansoor, somebody's asking you, man or a star's missiles? Yes or no? <laughs> Allah cannot stop the... The, the, the goat from eating the Quran, but he can stop the shaitan from going to heaven by shooting him. I mean, your God have no power over a goat, a goat. You see, you see, uh, Mansoor, whatever your name. I mean, look at the comment. You know, your your God is a is a joke. People are laughing at you. At you. you know. So. When a Muhammadan he tried to make a comment, we find that the comment is an embarrassment. And the Muslims, they are embarrassed by what is written, shown in the screen. So what do they do? They try to change the topic. Let me repeat the question again. Hey, Muslim, do you really believe that a human being and genie, they cannot go out of the space, to the space, otherwise Allah will shoot them by a star? If yes, say yes. Don't change topic to talk about Jesus. Well, did you see any mention anything about Jesus now? And as you see, I'm showing you your own reference. Against every rebellious shaitan means every insolent, impudent devil, when he went to Eva's drop on a news in heaven. True story. Okay, so. If shaitan try to get news from heaven, Allah will shoot him. But isn't it those kuffar who are sending James Webb, they are trying to get a news from heaven? Isn't it those pictures and images are news? <laughs> isn't it this is still in the news? Allah did not allow us to see it normally. This James Webb is going uh, uh, millions of years away. You know, I, I mean, compared to our ability of walking and, you know, and uh, he sent uh, this, this machine is sending us images, which is a stealing information from Allah. Allah did not allow us to see it. We can't see it in the, our uh, uh, eyes. Huh? Uh, here he's saying. Uh, look at this, guys. Look at this. He solved it. Arabian prophet. This verse talk about the unseen. How can you argue against something you cannot see? You will never see. We cannot judge one thing unknown to us. But, but we just showed you Mufti Mink saying that the unseen is seen now. <laughs> because of Jim's whip. <laughs> and now you are saying to me, we cannot judge the unseen. Okay, how shaitan who sleep inside your nose, Allah would need to shoot him by a star. I mean, if shaitan is so big to the point he can sleep inside your nose, jump inside your mouth, go inside even your vein, according to hadith, and suddenly Allah need to shoot him by a star. Do you know how big the star is? Don't you think the bullet is so big 
to the size of shaitan. Hmm? And now Mansour, he will think, he will scratch his head, he will scratch his... Uh, hmm? And then he will come with more funny answer. Mansour, you are adorable. I wish I can grow someone like you in my backyard. But the city does not allow it. So when we read for them what it says here, they try to deny. But this is nothing but fictions and you know, that's not even good, good for kids. Let us go to different verses because we are not done yet, are we? In the chapter of As-Safat, you know, uh, where it says the same we mentioned about the shaitan who steal information. I want the Muslim to tell us what shaitan he was able to snatch away from Allah. Any Muslim can tell us. And how shaitan can snatch it from Allah. By the way, this is how people in Indonesia, they laugh. They say, ha, 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 ha. Uh, that's Quran, the Quran of ha, ha. The Quran is, ha, okay, Muslims, what shaitan was able to snatch from Allah and how you can snatch from Allah. I mean, is that like a catch? He snatched something? How you can snatch from Allah? Mansoor, are you there? Mansoor? Mansoor, I want any smart Muslim to tell me what shaitan was able to snatch from Allah. I'm waiting. Hmm? Any Muslim from Indonesia? I like the sheikhs of Indonesia. They have a nice beard. They speak funny Arabic and they claim they have knowledge, especially in the front of the ignorant. Any, what happened to the, where's Mansour? Mansour, what the shaitan was able to snatch from Allah. Hmm. Except such as a snatch away something, something. What do you think Allah, he was holding, man? Any Muslim can explain to us a snatch something? Are we searching Google? So you Muslim, you make videos about science and etc. And then we find that shaitan is snatching something from Allah. And then when he snatch it, Allah, he shoot him. Do Allah get it back? Religion of Mr. Something? Well, I, okay, snatch something which is hearing? How you can do that? <laughs> Somebody tell Allah to use like different ad, man. Don't use what's up. Maybe Viber is better. I mean, it, it, don't you have like a better way to encourage your conversation so nobody can steal it? How shaitan can snatch something from Allah? Anyone? Mansoor, nowhere to be found. Snatch satanic verses. That's a good idea. No. He cannot snatch satanic verses, my friend, because satanic verses is made by shaitan, not by Allah, supposedly. So those are not snatched. Those are originally made in by shaitan himself. <laughs> and you know, the Quran is a book of clearance, by the way. It says something, something, something. Yeah, something. This is Egyptian accent, something. It says something. I mean, isn't it nice that Shaitan he snatched something from Allah? And look, Allah will not be able to shoot Shaitan because he is not aware that Shaitan is around until he snatch it. After he snatch it, Allah will shoot him. I mean, do you see how good the defense system of Allah? 
I mean, after, like, you know, you know, like in the museum, you see like they have an alar alarm system. When the alarm system goes, after they break the glass. Ah, this is the museum of Allah. He broke the glass, he snatched it, and now the alarm goes. And then the Muslim, they speak about science. Who can beat that? Hey guys, I think tomorrow I'm going to go and snatch something. I'm, I'm not sure what I will snatch, but whatever I can snatch. And I will let you know. Hmm? Yeah, somebody is looking for Mansoor, saying, hey Mansoor, we love you. <laughs> Come back, Mansoor. We really do love you, man. <laughs> Mansoor, are you okay? Hey, Mansoor, we need to call a doctor. Uh, I mean, Prophet Muhammad, sorry. He is the best doctor. Mansoor, ya Mansoor. Mansoor, ya Mansoor. Aina anta ya Mansoor. Asbahta kal sarfoor. Mansoor. Man. If Sayyid Discovery, our friend here, he said, if Sayyid discovers something, there, there goes the Imam to boast in Islam when it has nothing to do with the devil and the Quran. Yeah. Do you remember the guy, what his name? Uh, Sabil, Sabil Ahmad? Well, as sister has. The Prophet Muhammad, he says, when you sneeze, cover your mouth. And this is how he was able to stop the spread of diseases. Prophet Muhammad warned us. If we go to the hadith, the hadith says that's because shaitan, he's sleeping in your nose, not because of diseases. Actually, Muhammad said diseases cannot be spreaded. We go to the hadith, we will find the opposite. So suddenly, what is a fiction that shaitan on his sleep in your nose about uh, you know diseases spread and etc uh, do we have any uh, any Mansoor any additional Mansoor because the first Mansoor was missing you know what I'm thinking that Mansoor was snatched I mean think about it because Mansoor cannot be found anywhere no more and there is no Nowhere to find Mansoor. I think he'd been snatched. Anyone, any Mohammedan can replace all, all the Mohammedan that took a hike? So how in the world James Webb is speaking about Islam, my friend? I mean, do you see what we have here? Hmm? And as long, by the way, we are talking about the distance, uh, we're talking about this uh, uh, Mufti Mink, he said, millions and millions and millions of miles away, millions and millions. Well, Muhammad, he said, how far the sky is. <clears throat> Let us go to the Hadith. Oh, boy. The Prophet regarding Allah saying, and the coaches raises high, he said, huh, their height is as what is between the heaven and the earth. And the distance between two of them is 500 years. Science. Somebody tell them in James Webb that we know how far exactly the last galaxy, the maximum, the end of the universe. Seven heavens, between each one of them is 500 years. Science. Who can deny such a science? And you know, not to forget to mention that once, uh, maybe one day, the scientists, they will discover that there is water in the sky. Somewhere there is water. Hmm? You never know. The Muslim, they will use this hadith. If we show them this hadith now, they will say da'if. <laughs> Even though it says Hassan, which means good. I said, O oh, Messenger, where was our Lord before he created his creation? He said, 
he was a brother sister he was above the earth okay he was above uh, above mother above the cloud and below there was air and above there was air but hold on i mean stupidity is amazing the guy he just asked you before he created his creation so how there was air above and where are down what the heck they are asking before he created his creation he said he was above the cloud below which was air and above which was air and water then he created his throne above the water okay does it mean that the air and above air underneath air and then water underneath those are not his creation because the question is what where was our lord before he created his creation it turned to be that allah was surrounded by air and he did not create the air and there was water underneath of him muslims what the heck is that And now what they will say? They will say this is a fabricated hadith. Well, you Muslims, you fabricate a lot. I have to agree. I mean, you have a history of fabrication. But here it says that this hadith, I cannot zoom back out, man. What happened? Okay. It says, Hassan, Hassan, brother, Hassan, mashallah. Hassan. Hassan means good. You know? This is one of the grandsons of Muhammad name, supposedly. There was don't call the grandson of Muhammad Da'if now. So before the creation of everything, you see in the Bible it says that uh, the spirit was over the water, right? It was the earth was void. Uh, Muhammad, I think he he decided to copy some stuff and to add some. Stuff. <laughs> And here you see how much Muhammad he have intelligence. His intelligence is beyond, beyond in normal intelligence. The guy is asking you what, what, where our Lord was before he created his creation. You say there was above air, underneath air. Why he was a balloon? And why Allah is surrounded by air? And then Allah in the top of the water. Why? What does that mean? And then he created his throne on the water. Hmm. You know what? From the beginning, I knew it. Allah like fishing. Hmm. Actually, there's a hadith saying that Allah thrown in the top of a rooster. So I, Muhammad, he, he say things that don't make sense at all. In one hadith says he's thrown over the water. In different hadith, he says thrown over the rooster. In verse in the Quran says that Allah thrown over ten uh, mountain goats. Which one? Hmm. Uh, we have a person here. He's saying this. Rina CP asked CP to make one topic and focus, and I would show he is nothing. Will we have a topic? You wanna call me? <laughs> <laughs> so what the topic we are talking about guys choose one topic this is the topic the topic how Islam explained the creation of the earth and the heaven how we cannot go out of the zone of the earth how Allah he shoot you on your ass if you try to go out of the earth and you are saying to me choose one topic it's you Muslims who don't choose a topic. You Muslims are all over the place. The same as your Quran. Like if we go right now to the Quran, where is the topic? What what does the chapter here have to do with Shaitan going to heaven to snatch something? Hmm?
In verse number 14, the Quran says, If Allah he opened the gate from the heaven, the way to continue ascending there to what the heck? So Allah closed the gate, brother. <laughs> According to Muhammad, the gate of heaven was open for shaitan to go by as they wish. But after his birth, the gate was closed, brother. Are you focusing with me, Mr. Andaramond Galaxy? Like your name is Galaxy, man. You are a galaxy by yourself. Do you agree that Allah, he closed the gate? Okay, Mr. Galaxy, I want you to explain to us why Allah was letting the gate open first of all and then why he decided to close it do you think he made a mistake no no we are not using Skype you know if, if the Muslim want to call we can use this uh, because the sound will not go through I'm using this program here we have to use this program for calling if we decide to do so uh, hey Muslims why Allah allowed the gate open? And didn't Allah, he order shaitan to get out of it long time ago when Adam was in heaven? He told shaitan, get out of it. What do you mean the gate is open? Any Muslim can tell us? Huh? Somebody saying, uh, Mr. DJ85 drone vids you get him your, your name get me busy I have to look at you now are you a drone mashallah alhamdulillah the Arabian prophet seemed like to be by reading the Quran you are reading a comic comedy magazine my friend show respect please this is a holy book of God and this God is named Allah he knows best and now this is the best of his knowledge so when Allah he speak, he speak by the best of his knowledge. If he is a stupid, that's still not a problem. Still, this is the best. Allah knows best. Sorry, maybe you don't like it. But it's discovered scientifically that this is always true. Hmm? Shaitan said, open, yeah, some, some. I don't know if you know this, some, something. So the gate open. No, 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 no. The gate was open without open, yeah, some, some. Okay. As you see, the gate later was closed. And Muhammad, he claimed that when he was born, Allah, he closed the gate. Before shaitan, he goes, steal information, come back. Steal information, come back. After Allah, he made Muhammad come to life, that's it. Shaitan cannot go through in the gate. The gate is closed. Do we have any Mansur here? What happened to Mansur? What happened to this guy? Do, Mr. Galaxy, do you want to call me? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? I can open the gate for you to call me. Huh? Allah made Barak, you cannot. Don't question Hamad. Hey, yeah, hey, don't mention Hamad. Hamad is the best, forget about the rest. How I can understand if he was always changing his topic on the continued talking with no focus. Okay, let's make a deal. Armanada, Andermada, or Moda, whatever your name. Is, he, is that an Indonesian name, something? Let me know, please, if he's Indonesian. Let us make a deal. You choose the topic and we stay with it. What do you think? Is that fair, guys? You choose the topic from everything we said here. Because as see, we have a time. Choose. Tell me exactly what you want to talk about. And we will go for it. Do you want to call me, Mr. Er Darmoda? I mean, look who is talking about focus. Look, what this, what is the focus in the Quran? There is not a thing but with us or the store therefore is what the heck? I 
Allah is making a short time. He want to show us how much he knew. Hmm? Allah, he sent the wind for the lies. We created the human being from sounding clay. The genie, we made it from fire. So how genie is made it from fire? You want to shoot him by fire? I mean, the guy, he is a fire. How you can shoot fire by fire? What will happen exactly? You know? We burn him? If he is made of fire. Do we have any Abdul? Any Muhammadan want to focus? Ah, Mansoor here. Mansoor is back. Oh, uh, Mansoor, he just landed in the Arabian Prophet. Why you don't acknowledge the contradiction in the Bible? How come Judge, he has different account of his death in the Gospel? Judas? Man. Can you stop Arguing against the unseen? Oh, man. Abdul, there's no different account of the death of Judas. You're stupid. Judas, he hanged himself. After he hanged himself, nobody touched him for days. When his body decayed, he fell down, and his belly and his body shattered. There's no different account. You're stupid like your prophet. Brother, regarding the unseen, so how come it is unseen, but it's seen to Jesus? Isn't the Quran says that Jesus, he knew even what you had in your houses? How the Quran says that nobody know the unseen, save Allah, and then we find that Jesus, he have the unseen knowledge. Abdul is thinking, and when Abdul, he think, things is messed up, what he can do. Bad boys, bad boys. So this poor guy, he went and he started thinking, what I will ask, what I will ask, what I will ask. Hmm, Judas, ah, ah, ah. different account of Judas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Supposedly he grabbed the fox from his tail, but then he noticed that was this was the tail of his prophet. Hmm. And by the way, according to the Muslim stories, Judas was the one who took the image of Jesus and he was crucified. <laughs> you know, according to the Muslims, they tried to find a solution for Jesus not on the cross. So Jesus' brother, he said to his disciple, hey, who like to be like me? Huh? So I can't run away. The disciple, they say to the Muslim Jesus, man, inside, inside their head, they say, this Isa is a coward. He will run and he will die. Huh. You know what? Let it be. I will let him run so I can get some versions. And then, brother, Allah, he made one of the disciples of Jesus, or all of them, because there's a different story. All of them, they look like Jesus. Imagine the FBI, they enter the room of Jesus, and then they find the 12 guys, all of them, they look like Jesus. <laughs> and then the FBI agent, he said to himself, what the heck, which one is Jesus now? Hmm? All of them, they look like Jesus, brother. The whole room, you go inside the room, everybody look like Jesus. They are the same height, the same tall, the same voice, the same eyes. Exactly. Which means Allah, he made them shorter, taller, to just to adjust. Arabian prophet, yeah, what, what Mansoor? Mansoor is having treasure. Allah is WT. This is what is really funny about Muslims. Allah is WT. Oh, boy. What the heck is that? I'm trying to remember which country, the one they call it SWT for the bathroom, but let it go. He gave Jesus, the prophet, leaves and ability. You see in the Quran, it's not hard to understand. Okay, how come he did not give leave to Muhammad? <laughs> Mansoor. <laughs> Isn't Muhammad the most powerful prophet, the most beloved to Allah? So why Muhammad he says, I know nothing of the unseen. 
Huh? I mean, here we go. This is the, the, the most powerful prophet, according to Muslims. His name is Muhammad. Uh, and yet he is saying clearly that I know nothing about the unseen. Nothing. Read carefully. Chapter 6, verse number 59. I don't tell you that with me are the treasure of Allah, nor that I know the unseen, nor I tell you what I am an angel. Okay, so how come all those things, Muhammad, you do not know? And then you admitted that Jesus, he can know the unseen. The excuse is Allah gave the ability to see the unseen to Jesus, but that will make him God. Why he did not give the same ability to Muhammad, I will tell you. If Muhammad given the ability to see the unseen, he will use it to see women underwear. <laughs> Imagine Muhammad was given now the ability to see the unseen. What he would do? He will go in the street. Oh, this woman, she have a red panty. Oh boy, look at this one. Oh man, this one. This is really scary. I'm not going to look there. Let me look at the other one. Oh. So while Jesus, he have the knowledge of the unseen, he can tell you your sin, he can tell you what you did, he can tell you your crimes, he can tell you everything you do. Muhammad, he have no knowledge, and the reason for that, Allah will never give him the ability of the unseen, because he knew he is a pervert, he will use it for wrong reasoning. You cannot give such an ability to a pervert. Can you? Are you there, Mansur? So now the Muslim they claim that Muhammad is the greatest prophet, but they, they admitted that Jesus, he has all the ability of God. He is a creator, even he can create. Unbelievable. Hey guys, are you enjoying what we are doing here? If you are enjoying, don't forget to subscribe. And then after you subscribe, don't forget to unsubscribe because then Allah will bless you. Because you just unsubscribe from Christian brands. And Allah will double your reward. Don't you want to get double reward? I mean, look at the logic of this religion. You can do evil, and then you do good. And then one good can, like, you get double reward over the bad deed. Which means, like, I do yesterday a rape a woman. Today, I will rape a man. <laughs> Allah will reward me double. <laughs> and he will delete my deed. <laughs> what a good mathematics. Unbelievable. So don't forget to subscribe and spend the day having fun. Subscribe and subscribe, subscribe and subscribe so you can get a lot of deeds from Allah. Yeah. Remember Allah, he have a lot of knowledge about a lot of things. You know, we, we did not really mention everything to you because it's too much. You cannot handle the truth. That Santa Claus is real and Allah is not. Hmm? You know, the funny is, the Quran says, nothing like Allah, which is something he is trying to copy from the Old Testament, and nothing like God. Then Muhammad, the way he said, who was Samuel al-Basir? <laughs> Just to show you. <laughs> Chapter 42, verse number 11. Allah, the creator of the heaven and the earth, brother, he made, he made you, uh, you know, uh, mate to marry from yourself. Hmm? And he made for the animals uh, wives too. For the animals, he made animals and bears, brother. Hmm? Okay. And, uh, okay, and uh, there's nothing like him. He is what? The all hearer, all seer. He just said nothing like him. Hearing and seeing is an option a chicken has, cat, human has. You just said you cannot compare him to anything. And actually, this is against what Muhammad said. 
Didn't, didn't Muhammad, he says, Allah come down every third part of the night and say who is supplicating to me? If Allah is all hearer and all seer, he do not need to come down every night because he can see whatever he is. But he cannot. He, he don't have a good reception, obviously. <laughs> uh, Oh, okay. The Christians, this guy, forgive Rohan, forgive me, Rohan. Christians don't follow Jesus or Bible, but only follow fake Jesus, Paul, fake Apostle Paul. I don't know. You see, Muslims are really very weird, unique creatures. So why your stupid Quran says that Paul is the most powerful messenger of Jesus? This is the chapter of Yasin, and this is verse number 14. And the third messenger is Paul. Open Ibn Kathir right now. Open the Tafsir books. And you will see the third is Paul. Here you see the stupidity of this cult. Those people are copy-paste religion, if we can call them religion. None of them read his books. The Quran, the Quran had actually with the Muhammadan. What the Quran says. Chapter 65, 62, sorry. Verse number 5 says, The likeness of those who were entrusted in the obligation of the Torah, this is a Muslim translation, uh, is the same as donkeys. <laughs> but I find this verse specifically speaking about Muslims. As you see, they keep attacking Paul, but in their books, their prophet never said one bad word about Paul. Look like Muhammad never heard of Paul. But the Muslim, they heard of him. He never said a bad word. In fact, it's the opposite. If we go right now and read the interpretation, those people, they carry books, but they are like donkeys. They don't read their books. Because they cannot read them. Even their prophet is illiterate. Brother, if we go right now and open Ibn Kathir, you will see Ibn Kathir saying clearly that the third messenger is Paul. And not only that, by the way, Paul, according to the Muslims, when he was in his way to Damascus to kill the Christians, the Messiah, he appeared to him and he made him blind. This is in your books. Idiots. Read with me, Abdul. Read with me, Abdul. But forget you don't know how to read. You're like, you're, you're like your prophet. You know how to type only, but you cannot read. Hmm. So here it says, we supported them with the strength, strength them with the third messenger. Ibn Juraj said, narrated from uh, Wahab ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'aib al-Jabi, the names of the first two messengers, Shema'un. This is the same on Peter. And the, the third, second one is Yohanna. This is John. And the third one is Bolos. This is the, the way Muslims they say the word Paul. And the city was Antioch. Hey, Abdul, are you there? <laughs> Where is Mr. Forgiving Rohan? Rohan, ya Rohan, you became Qaryan. Rohan, ya Rohan. Rohan, ya Rohan. Now Rohan, he will take a hike. And suddenly, Paul what? Paul was fooled by shaitan on the way to Damascus. So your Muslim books say the opposite. <laughs> it's time to drink my coffee. Anyway, guys, I think it's time to go. Did we have a good time? I hope so. You see, I'm trying to come more, but you guys are not really helping. We ask you to make the view 20,000 but you are not doing a good job, all right? You are not talking about, not, not really doing a good job. Uh, uh, Mansour, he asked, at 2320, the Bible talk about donkey penis. Is this really a book 
of God, Christian prince. You worship a man. Read about donkey private part. Man, look who is talking about donkey penis. Uh -huh. First of all, are you sure it's a donkey? Maybe it was a mule. Maybe it was your penis because you are a donkey too. So if you go there, you will see this is not about a penis, it's not about a donkey, it's not about a, a woman, it's not about sex, it's about sin, that there is people who they are living in two cities, they are following pagan religion like Islam. So here, let me make it simple for you. The penis is your prophet and the donkey is Allah. And Ezekiel is warning people from such a penis because your religion is perfectly the religion of penis. What will happen to me if I believe in Allah? Allah will increase the size of my penis. How big is going to be? Muhammad said, endless. So if, as long as you are ashamed of the word penis, why your prophet, he promised you endless penis? Aren't you ashamed of penis? As long as you are not a person who likes the word penis, how even the Quran described for China of the women, you will if. Is that in the Quran or I'm making things up? Hmm? When Muhammad, he says, I was the most weak person between mankind in Ifim. He was talking about Ifim using his finger or using his penis. And then he invoked Allah and then Allah, he sent him a dish of He ate it, he got the power of 40 men. By the way, I'm not going to ask you how you must measure his power. Hmm, interesting. Did you brought him 40 men and you have competition? He beat them all? Amar Rabbi Amar. Look at this. It's your Quran, not my book. What your Quran is saying? Those female, the virgins, Allah, He give them to the Muslims. Nobody open the skin inside their vagina. This is a religion? Do Allah need to put more? Don't you think there's missing description? What about lipstick? There's lipstick there? Oh, forget it. There's a hadith where it says that the Prophet said, a woman, it's written over her vagina the name, the names of every man who will F her. And this Abdul is ashamed of the penis. According to your religion, Mansoor, it is written in your vagina. I don't know if you are a male or female. You look like a male. I don't know. It's hard to know these days, especially in Muslim countries. And your name is Mansoor. And that's the name of a male, but who knows? Maybe you use the ads like Abraham and you cut it all. So listen carefully. According to your prophet, the names of every man who will F a woman or that woman is written over her vagina. So Mansoor, do you like to call me and explain the hadith? And by the way, I challenge you to take a camera and zoom in and try to find the names written in the, your wife's vagina. Because this way you will know who is sleeping with her. You will know the whole history of sex. Mansoor, if a woman, she work as a hooker, don't you think she will have a yellow pages there? It is written over her vagina? Is that science? And why Allah, he wrote the names of the men who were ever over her vagina? I mean, can't he write them over her hand? Her leg? What about her ass? I mean, how big the vagina is? How many pages? And what if a woman, she have no names written? Ah, she will be a nun. MashaAllah. Do you want me to pray for you? My friend, you're welcome to pray for everybody. Why not? Pray for the poor, pray for the sick, pray for everybody. And nothing special about me to pray for me. Uh, do we have any Muslim? You know, he want to find a solution. A Muslim talking about sex, when all his religion is about sex. Dahman, Dahman. Hmm. Yeah, the religion of Dahman, Dahman. Uh, any Muslim have any object, objection for what we said? Anyway, guys, I can't stay longer because I heard, I heard um, 
that women in the heaven, they are so beauty like rubies. All my life I was dreaming to have sex with rubies. Oh, not this ruby. There's a ruby. Her name is Ruby. She is an Egyptian actor, uh, sorry, singer. <laughs> Abdul, those women, they are so white, yet they are like rubies. And coral? Me. That's deep. And this is the reward for good. Ah, if in women is good for good. Ah, man, I love it. You see, because you are so good, Allah will give you good ifin. Do you see? Do you see the nobility of this God? He's noble. He's not savage, not down. He's not about sex. No. This is love, love. Those women are created to if them, brother. Hmm. Mashallah, mashallah. Nobility, nobility. Mm. And by the way, in the heaven of Allah, you will have two heaven. Hey, Abdul, why two heaven? Oh, hold on. Two heaven. So like in case the FBI looking for you in one heaven, you go to the other one. <laughs> How you can live in two heaven? Like, what the heck is that? I will tell you, the stupid Muhammad, he was looking for the letter at the end, you see. To get the ban, al-ihsan. To get the ban. He repeat the same thing, you know. And then suddenly he, he want to say the word Jannah. So he said, Jannah, who care? I mean, just make them two, man. Just to make the word fit with the tune. So the word Jannah, which is mean one heaven, became Jannah. Himaran. You see, all the Quran is focused in a few words, either in by Ya N, A N, O N. Because this is a word, or in Arabic, those words are, the words have at the end with A, A N is almost endless because you can add that to any word very easy you know mansuran himaran jahshan muhammadan taliban <laughs> and yet this idiot in order just to make it a, 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 like a like a rabbi music he could not keep it one heaven he made them to heaven uh, CP and fanboy cannot answer my question. Only one question. Just show me. Just show me. Only one text. Jesus, make clarification, confirmation that God of the Jews of Israel is what? Is Tataragamanatun Yadahu Havavihi? That is the guy, he is speaking Hebrew now. Mr. Galaxy, he is a Hebrew specialist. How is anybody can show him yet? <laughs> you idiot. Let me get you busted from the Quran. If we go in the Quran, you are talking about Yahweh, you idiot. Idiot. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. If we go in the Quran, you have a prophet. His name is Zechariah and Yahya. Hmm? Yahya. <coughs> Uh, here it says Yuhi. Let us say go to Yuhiya. You want to write it wrong. Chapter 19, verse number 7, it says, Zechariah, Yahya. This is Yahweh, you idiot. So you stupid Quran. <laughs> he took the word. He did not know what the word mean. So he took it. He used it as it is. Both names, Zechariah and Yahya, both they belong to Yahweh. So this donkey Muhammad, and this donkey is asking me, challenging me, show me, show me, like show me, man, just one, just one, man, just one. Like just for the sake of the shin of Allah, shin and nuya. Can you show me? No, we cannot show you. Are you kidding me? Nobody can show you anything. You are just Abdul. It's full of stupidity, yeah. So when you say Zechariah, go right now and search what Zechariah means. You will see Muhammad get busted. You Muslims have 99 names for your God. None of them is Yahweh. None of them. Suddenly, you have Zechariah in the Quran. Suddenly, you have Yahweh.
Oh boy. Aman Rabbi aman. Aman Rabbi aman. Abdul ibn Yaqar Rumman. You ask me from the New Testament? Ah, you ask me from the New Testament. Uh, okay, okay, listen, you know, I need to go, but I can give you a chance to call me. Do you like to call me? Do you like to call me? You guys, do you think this guy, he would dare to call me? You stupid idiot. Isn't it the name John is exist in the New Testament too? Isn't it? We have John the Baptist, Yahya, the one you call him Yahya, the same person. And we have John the disciple. And we have Zechariah. We have Tons. Ian is asking from the New Testament. Well, those are from the New Testament, you idiot. <laughs> and this story is about the New Testament, you idiot. Chapter Maryam 19. Was Maryam exist in the time of Moses? Potato, 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 Okay. Well, anyway, maybe tomorrow Muslims will call us if we go live. But guys, we asked you to make it 20,000 before we go live again. But you guys are not helping. Should I just keep it 20,000 and never show up again until you make it 20,000? Don't make me up and set. That means I will sit on the throne of Allah. You know what the word upset me? In the old days, the American cowboy, when they sit in the horse, in the top of the horse, horse, the horse go crazy. And this is where the word upset coming from. If we go to the Quran, we will find the same root of the word. Allah, he said, in the top of eight goats. Oh, the search engine did not find it. It is here. Okay, that will be better. In 69, verse number 17, it says, and the angels will be in the side, and eight angels will be in the day, bear the throne of Europe. If you go to the hadith of Muhammad, Muhammad he explained it, it says eight mountain goats. Eight mountain goats. Mountain goats. Mountain. Goats. I'm, I'm, uh, you wonder why I'm repeating. I'm just making Quran because the Quran is just repeating the same word over and over and over. Hmm? Is it true, Muslims, that Allah will set the top of eight mountain goats? Oh boy. Ah, look what it says here, brother. Look what it says. The heaven, the heaven, the distance between the heaven and the brother is 71, 72, 73 years. <laughs> In the hadith, he says 500 years, but look at go now. Here it says, and above that, there are eight mountain goats. <laughs> between the distance of whose hoofs and hunches, like the distance between one heaven to the next. <laughs> and Allah the exalted is above that. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh boy. So the guy they are talking about who is nothing like him, he is sitting at the top of a huge goat. <laughs> Look how big the goat is. <laughs> the distance between the hoops, brother, 
Listen carefully. The distance between the hooves and the hunches is the same distance between one heaven and the other, brother. Brother, they are so big, brother. Because Allah is very big. It makes sense. Allah is so big, so you think the goat will be small? No way. They are very big goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy <clears throat> anyway I need to go and get some mountain goats otherwise I will stay here until tomorrow this is endless stupid comedy uh, guys I hope you have a good day and uh, uh, don't forget uh, don't forget to forget that in case you forget Allah will remind you brother all right Allah he remind you if you forget but Allah will make you forget the Quran for Allah is the best of making people forget uh, Allah he said any verses we abrogate or cause to be forgotten we will make something similar or better so brothers and sisters let us hope my coming video will be similar or better even if I delete it <laughs> You idiot, why you delete it if it's going to be similar? What the, what the heck was that? I mean, you are God, your name is Allah, and then you will delete it, and then you will make something similar? Are you okay? Are you trying to kill time? Don't kill time. Time will bleed, and you Muslims will be sorry, because time is bleeding already, and your day is coming when you face your maker. And you will see that the black stone cannot save you. Muhammad is the child molester. He cannot save you. He will be down in hell forever, for eternity. You will be having fun together. I want to say to all of you, thank you very much for being here. We pray that the Lord will open the eyes of the fool and the fool will not stay Abdul. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince was serving you for today. Hope we did learn something new. Take care.